What's up, guys, and welcome back to episode five of the Pokey MMO podcast. We've got a super fun one for you today, so I won't take up too much of your time. But as always, if you just want to quickly go over the catch events as well as the featured media for the week, feel free to skip to the end. I will have timestamps on YouTube. If you're enjoying, make sure to follow the project on Spotify and subscribe to the YouTube channel. But let's get right into this episode. All right, well, let's let's kick it off, dude. But again, thank you so much for for agreeing to do it. I've been a huge fan of yours since you started. Like, you're one of the accounts that um, I try to stay informed or like up to date on who's posting on YouTube so I can support even just by like watching videos. But you're seriously like I don't say it lightly. You're one of probably the top two that I've seen that just has come out of the gate swinging. Like you just make such high quality videos and it's it's the most impressive thing to me so i appreciate you taking the time to to chat with me yeah absolutely i'm i'm actually so honored to be here right now because i before like when i first started playing pokemon i watched petrowski in your videos so like the fact that i'm on a <laughs> podcast right now it, with, with you of all people is absolutely like mind boggling to me or goggling i can't even speak you know i'm like uh <laughs> <laughs> hey crazy. all good i was gonna say i really appreciate all the kind words i uh i've been a i started out as like a minecraft youtuber and then i made rust videos and now i finally migrated this game and uh you know i finally found like a thing that clicked a you know type of video that i like to make so i'm really excited to be in the part of this community it's really awesome yeah i mean that explains to me everything i needed i mean one of my questions was going to be how'd you get so good at editing and if you're making minecraft videos or rough like rust videos then that oh. completely answers the question. <laughs> oh, so funny thing on that, I actually, so when I was like 14, 15, I did like Minecraft YouTube videos and I ended up getting like a few thousand subs and like I would get thousands of views per video, but I moved yeah. schools a lot and I thought I would get bullied. For some reason, I just thought I would get bullied at school if they someone <laughs> yeah. found my channel. So I deleted it. And then like years later when I was like, I don't know, 18, 19, 20, I started making Rust videos. Uh, and I even like made a Rust movie. Like I don't know if you are into that game at all, but making movies is like a big thing, like big cinematic pieces. And I made oh, one cool. of those, and it, it got like three thousand views. Uh, the account's called Gooby. That's my old like handle or whatever. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah, the movie's still live right now. Uh, but after I moved houses and you know my internet kind of went down in shambles, I couldn't really play that game anymore. So I migrated over the Pokemon though. Yeah. And uh, you know the rest is history. I'm here now. No, that's that's freaking sick. Yeah, I've tried Rust here and there. Um, I have a couple friends who are super into it, but I just, I mean, it's probably just a skill issue thing with games like that for me. I, I have over 4,000 hours in that game. It's it's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, maybe, maybe I didn't put in enough grind, but it was like, I was one of those kids that would spawn with the rock and then like get killed instantly. And like, I would oh, yeah. just get chased by people. And so R my experience is bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I but that's sick you. though, dude. So, so I mean, like, how did you find Poke MMO initially? So the funniest story of how I found this game, actually, uh, yeah. I have it with me right next to me right now. The uh -huh. only Pokemon game I've ever played in my life is Pokemon Leaf Green, and I had it on my Game Boy when I was a kid. Yeah. And I found my Game Boy again, like in a drawer, and I was like, oh my god, I can play my Game Boy. So I played the entirety of Leaf Green, and like I was at the point where I was gonna catch Moltres, and then and I left the charger for it at my uh, old girlfriend's house. We're no longer together, but. Uh -huh. uh, I, you know, the chargers, I was like, oh my god, I really want to play Pokemon right now, and I was like really obsessed with it, so I just looked up online, online Pokemon, and then oh, I no like, found a top five video, and then this came up, and then like, I was, I just downloaded this one, because I was like, oh, I can play Kanto, so I, you know, I mean, the Dude, that's the game. crazy, that's, I mean, that's kind of a, like, it's one of those things where it's just the butterfly effect of like, oh shoot, I left my charger, and now here you are making, like, awesome YouTube videos for this game, you know what I mean? That's so sick. Yeah. Fun, funniest thing too, I the only reason I got so obsessed with this is because I found a shiny uh um Geo dude on Leaf Green and like I didn't know shinies existed and that like sparked my interest in Pokemon again, which got me like obsessed with it. Oh wait, so on your on your most recent playthrough after refinding Leaf Green and stuff, yeah. you found a shiny? Yeah, I like on my original copy of Leaf Green I started a new account and like on that account I have a shiny Geodude on it that That's I evolved into. So sick, with. dude. <laughs> yeah. And That's I didn't know awesome. they existed the whole time. So like it blew my mind when I saw it. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah dude actually funny piggybacking off that i actually my first shiny in any mainline pokemon game was a geodude as well and oh, it was no on diamond and pearl days i remember oh, yeah. literally i like vividly remember the moment of i was in that maniac tunnel or whatever trying to figure out what that was and mm -hmm. i just walk in and got a shiny geodude i had no idea what they were but like 
everybody thought I was cool in like what was it fifth or sixth grade <laughs> so it was, it was kind of a funny moment but it's that's I feel like that's kind of what hooked me as well so it's it's cool to see that it's a very similar story for you yeah I think that's why I'm so into like the pve like shiny hunting side of things like I I like pvp don't get me wrong I just am not amazing at it so yeah uh, I like Enyo, but that's about it yeah, no, it's PvP is something I need to get into. I mainly want to get into it because of the vanities that you get. Those are freaking sick, dude. Like the oh, shell yeah. helmet. The helmets. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, dude. Goes crazy. Another question I had for you was where did you get I mean, obviously I know where you got the Team Rocket idea from for the channel. Yeah. But was that due to like Leaf Green and just your experience as a kid enjoying like them as the antagonist? Or where did you no. uh to get that idea from? So this is going to sound a little like ridiculous, but I've, I've just had so many, so much experience making YouTube channels from like the ground up just because I've had, I've done two from the ground up and gotten like, you know, the Rust one had like 300 subs almost. And then the Minecraft yeah. one obviously had a few thousand, like I've, I've built YouTube channels up before I've seen it before. And I just knew like, if I was going to make a, a, like another YouTube channel, I wanted it to be like a thing to where if you looked at it, you'd be like, oh, I recognize that that's familiar. And then it would like pique your interest because you're already familiarized with it. And it was, like, I was playing a Pokemon game. I was like, oh, like Team Rocket, that makes sense. Everybody knows about Team Rocket. There's all this Team Rocket paraphernalia all over the internet, like, you know, from the, <laughs> you know, anime and just thumbnails and everything. Like, I, it would just seem like a really natural and easy thing to do. So it was, it was more like a lazy decision more than anything, but also like a calculated kind of like, oh, like this would kind of like pique the interest of the viewer if they saw it because they're familiar with it kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, that's super. I mean, it's very intelligent to do, you know, I mean, it's like you saying that makes complete sense it makes me feel like an idiot for choosing young <laughs> no, i mean you built your brand you're, you're doing way better than i am but like that's what that's why i did it you know <laughs> no but that's freaking sick though dude like that's actually a really clever idea because i will say i think the first time i i chatted with you you popped in one of my streams or you had commented on something yeah. and initially it's like you see team rocket you instantly associate it with oh it's like it's pokemon you know like it's yeah, yeah. it's definitely it's all about like the a, connotation yeah, exactly. It's a very smart way to just kind of naturally guide people into, like, you know, your YouTube and, and what you're doing, especially people who maybe don't know what PokeMMO is. You know, if somebody yeah. stumbles across even that video that I watched, that's like how to get a girlfriend in PokeMMO. They're watching it, they laugh, they think it's funny, but they're yeah. like, wait, what game is this? It could pique interest, too. Dude, that video is such a shot in the dark. It, <laughs> it did not perform well, the, the, like, view-wise. But I'm happy, like, my channel, like, what I really want to do with my channel is I want to be able to make this, like, cinematic, really nice content, kind of like how in Rust it's very, like, standardized to make very cinematic, you know, movie-like content. I want to bring yeah. that over to Pokemon. I think that this game has so much potential for that type of video. But I didn't want to be, like, locked into, like, a a specific type of video to where, like, everyone only expects this cinematic, really high-end content from me, and then that's all I'm allowed to post. Yeah. you know, I, like, I'm... I just graduated college, like, I, I work full-time, like, I have so many other, like, responsibilities outside of this that, like, I can't spend so much time on it, to the point where, like, I didn't want to pressure myself and force myself into making, like, these really nice this content if I wanted to just make something, like, a little more lighthearted. Uh, yeah. So, like, I, I want the option to, quote-unquote, I guess, shit post if I don't know if I'm on the post <laughs> on this podcast or not. Oh, or yeah, like... you know, you, you go crazy. I do okay. not mind at all. Yeah, but I just I just wanted to be able to shit post and not have to like worry about it. So like if I don't get certain views on some videos, I don't care. It's my YouTube channel. Like I just want to do what I find interesting and compelling and like I will still make this amazing stuff, but I still wanted to do stuff like that. Yeah, dude. No, I I have a ton of respect for that too because I feel like I don't know. I feel like people can feel how genuine you are whenever you create guides, videos, memes, shit posts, all that kind of stuff. It's like you just really can feel if they actually have their heart into it or if it's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm just I'm just doing YouTube. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, I, I definitely have my heart in. I've even like put my money where my mouth is. Like the whole region lock series, uh, when I first yeah. started making episodes for it, I didn't really have any assets associated with the region lock, which made it look a little bit more like amateur like in my opinion. I really wanted to like up the professional level of like the episodes. Because my, yeah. my whole goal of the region lock series is that I will literally want to make it like a TV show. Like I want it to be season one, season two, like the next season of the region lock. I'm changing my back piece and my glove slot, but I'm keeping like the main two out parts of the outfit. So that oh, way, when sick. you look at a clip from like the second season, you can tell that you're watching the second season just based on the outfit, you know, stuff like that. Oh, like okay. I, and I'm going to, I'm going to change the animation introduction and the, and the audio, like the whole intro is going to change for season two when I move to the next region. So yeah. that's the whole thing. But like, I've, I've literally, I spent like, you know, hundreds of dollars on that animation for it. I, I paid a dude for the voice acting. I, you know, I paid people in the community for like artwork associated with the region, like the checklist and whatnot. Uh, yeah. You know, so I've definitely like, I, I definitely like see this going somewhere and I really care about this. I'm really passionate about it. 
you know, I don't really care all too much about money, but it, like, I'm, I'm starting to get that position, unfortunately, where like, I, I'm, I may need to start like making money or doing something from this. Yeah. If I want to keep on Which doing isn't it bad. at a professional level. Like the yeah. next region lock, I need to get a new animation. I need to get a new, like rehire that voice actor. Uh, yeah. Which I'm going to try to pay out of pocket, but I do have some ideas of how I could like make money right now. Like I've been making like hype edits for my teammates and I might like try to do that or whatever, like edit yeah. for people for money. I don't really know. But no, it's, that's it super smart, dude. And it's cool too, to like see you getting scrappy with all that because it's, it's rough too. Like, I mean, I had a similar experience as well with, I mean, my little, that silly mm -hmm. little cabbage, like VTuber thing that I use and a couple other assets. Like I'd created a bunch of assets that I like use personally. Yeah. Um, but investing money in that kind of stuff, like you kind of have to have the passion and love for it. So I, again, I respect that a ton. Like, I think that's super cool. And like I said, even just, it's not just you saying it, but if anyone goes and clicks on any of the videos on your channel, you can tell like, oh, this is someone who really cares about it. And this is someone who is trying to like create content to entertain me or to like, you know, like it's so cool to hear you even talk about the idea of not just like, oh yeah, like I make videos, you know, whatever. It's no, like I want to make these, these things that haven't been made here before. I think the community could benefit from this. I think I want to turn this into like a TV series. Like that's not a common thought for a lot of people to have. And I think that's so cool. I don't know, dude. I'm I'm just a very I usually when I like get put my mind towards something, I put like 120% effort into it, whether that be for better or for worse. But I'm, yeah. I'm no. I just really like this game. I think it has so much potential. This game is so it's like I played RuneScape for over a decade, like the, one of the biggest MMOs in the world. And this yeah. game, in my opinion, is a better MMO than RuneScape. In my opinion, I mean, you know, yeah. a lot of people might disagree, but like it just like based on like how everything is structured like it has it's great for longevity like the community is amazing it has so much potential like with raids and everything that's coming out like i just think this mmo is going to be massive in the next like few years like, i think it's going to absolutely like blow up and i really love the game itself so like i'm really happy that it is you know in the position it's in right now and i'm happy to be a part of the community because yeah you know, this really is awesome i've never seen anything like this especially coming from like the rust community which is super toxic <laughs> it's a little fresh for fresh air you know yeah, dude, I, I've suffered, like I said, firsthand from that. So I definitely know what you mean. But it's it is crazy. And I feel like a broken record whenever I say that. But it's this community really is special, like as cheesy as that sounds like it, it just is, you know, so many people are so supportive and and like you've probably had a similar experience. But again, like whenever I started making videos, there's that fear of like, oh, no, like, is this going to go well? Are people going to hate this? And oh, yeah, everybody jumped to support me. Everybody like, like there's, there's no pride among like any of the content creators. It's just like, Oh cool, dude, improve on this. Or like, I loved this or you'll plug each other. Like it's such a cool tight knit community that it just, it, it honestly like makes you excited to get on just for the sake of getting on to like chat with people. So. Oh yeah. I literally had somebody message me. Like they were like, Hey man, like I, I saw your video and you said you should get on a team. Like, are you sure? Like, is that a good idea? And I was, I like doubled down. I was like, yes, man, get on a team. It makes things so much better. <laughs> and he messaged me a week later. He's like, dude, I joined a team. You're absolutely right. I'm in, I'm loving this so much more. Thank you so much for, I was like, yeah, dude, absolutely. But yeah, teams are massive. It's it, the sense of community. Like in this oh, game, yeah. it just really helps. Yeah. And plus, I mean, you get all those cool opportunities, like you were saying, where if you think outside the box, not only do you have people who support your channel but also you know you, you're making hype edits for people you're collaborating on team oh. projects together like it's the potential's crazy dude dude i the hype the my team team rue that i'm in right now i'm making them a like shiny hype like uh like a, basically like a, a may shiny recap you know how like barrels does is like shiny recaps yeah i'm i'm doing that same kind of structured video but i'm doing it in like a hype edit kind of it's gonna be so cool i have so many of them and i'm gonna compile them all into one thing i'm so excited to post that i've been working on it for like two weeks now so sick, I'm, dude. Yeah, it'll probably be out in like the next few days after recording this. So, you know, whenever that comes out. Yeah, dude. And again, like I'll have all, you know, I'll have a bunch of links to all that, but I'm sure whenever I watch that, I'll I'll give it a little shout out too, because that's so sick, dude. Like oh, yeah. you're uh, you're genuinely one of those channels where it's, you know, you are you're always innovating and creating new things to enjoy. And so what other projects are you working on? Mm. I'm glad you asked. I have uh, two things in mind. Uh, the first thing being, I just hit 1K subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. I'm Let's go. really Congrats. excited about that. But for 1K, obviously, I have to do like the standard YouTube tradition of doing like a 1K special. 
you know, you yeah. got to do that. Uh, so <laughs> I, I don't want to leak exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just going to say right now, I'm going to be doing a 1K special. I'm going to be making a video. I'm going to be doing an event. And for, uh, the only thing I'm leaking is the top prize for the event. The winner of the event is going to be getting 10 million Pokemon. I'm also going to be giving a 5 million uh, Pokemon Pokemon giveaway alongside of the event. So there'll be two separate prize pools for that. Shoot, dude. That's and, super uh, exciting. The entire community can participate. So I'm excited about that. I'll be making a video on that. Uh, so that's one project. Uh, another thing, which is an even bigger project and even big, bigger undertaking, which I've already uh, told you about, but mm-hmm. I... Uh, it's a project that I'm going to be releasing called Poke MMO TV. Yeah. Uh, and essentially, uh, if anybody listening is familiar with like Chris Archie or Chris Archie prods from way back in the day in the RuneScape community, essentially he had a YouTube channel where he would uh, have everybody submit their own clips from the game, you know, crazy stuff that happened in the, in the RuneScape game. And then he would like compile them all together into one video showcasing all the stuff, you know, in a really well edited manner. And he would introduce all the clips, you know, he would have the people who submitted the clips, their name and their team on like the top left of the screen. So, you know, who submitted it. And yeah. it was basically, it got to the point where like, if something cool happened in the game and you're recording, like the person recording would be like, oh my God, Chris Archie, Chris Archie, I'm going to be on Chris Archie. <laughs> and I want yeah. that to be in Pokemon most so badly. I think that would work so well. And Poke- like, imagine like there was just like a YouTube series where like you would like check in every week and there would just be like shiny reactions from the community, like cr- crazy glitches, crazy stuff that happened, crazy GTL snipes, like just insane stuff that happens all compiled in the one video. Like every- yeah. that was such a cool thing. Uh, so I'm working on that. I already have the logo made for it. I, I'm compiling uh, clips from like all of my friends in the community and other content creators just because I don't want to submit all my same clips for the first episode. That wouldn't really make sense. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to release the first episode and then I'll have like an email for people to submit stuff. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll have more you know details in the video when I actually release that. But, you know, there'll be a way that the community can actually like if you got like a shiny and you wanted to show it off to the entire community in like a cool way, you could submit that. and It'll be like a cool thing. Uh, so I'm really excited about that project. Yeah, no, that sounds sick. That's honestly like one of my favorite. I mean, I've been a lifetime Pokemon fan and one of my favorite types of videos has always been shiny reactions or like, you know, big moments that have happened in shiny or in the Pokemon, like the Pokemon community. And that's Mm. one thing that like there's just kind of a big hole, you know, like there's there's definitely people who, you know, you have like barrels who do like recaps or people who post videos of like, oh, cool, I got this. But yeah, like you're saying, there isn't a place that it's like oh you know i got this shiny this is such a cool moment like let me send this to somebody like let me try to get featured on this like let that's just yeah. such a cool little pocket to slot in for sure especially in pokemon when you're spending like hundreds of hours doing certain grinds like it, you know it's nice to be able to share it with people who have like like-minded interests and as you yeah, know dude. so like no, i just think it'd be a cool sure. project uh, no, it, it's it's honestly one of the coolest projects i've heard of like i'm super pumped to see it it makes me want to actually start single encountering so i can show something off <laughs> yeah there's something i wanted to yeah. bring out i forgot to mention with the whole like uh i just wanted to mention because i thought this was cool the voice actor that i hired for the region lock uh his mm-hmm. name is greg gidney the dude actually like believe it or not he voiced some like uh fallout 3 dlc like that he's like worked in the industry so, before so the guy who does the region lock voice for the intro literally has worked on fallout 3 before like he does he's, like so voice acting sick like, like, I just thought that was, like, such a cool little thing. Also, my animator's from Serbia, so I thought that was cool, too. Dude, that's... You've got a you've got an international team over there. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, dude, Team Rocket's everywhere, bro. We're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, that Take is super over. cool, dude. Voice acting is something that I think... I have a ton of respect for, too. Um, I actually graduated in... What is it? Audio engineering and sound design. Oh, and, no kidding. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so the goal is actually going to be to work for a studio to record voice actors or create sound effects for cartoons and media is like the big goal so i have a ton of respect for that stuff dude that is awesome what the heck my uh i literally have like whenever i need voice acting work i get people in the community to help me which is cool but i didn't know you were literally like went to school for that that's crazy dude (laughs) yeah it's kind of a kind of a weird thing to do but it's it's super cool like i've always just been really into it i'm a huge nerd so like i watch a ton of animes (laughs) and and stuff like that so Dude, it's, I literally definitely... graduated from a bachelor's of computer science. I am very much a nerd <laughs> as well. Hey, well, I feel like everybody who like grinds Poke MMO, we're all pretty like minded, I would say. Yeah. So it's it's pretty nice. Oh, another thing I wanted to bring up that I thought was cool mm-hmm. was that point you said of how you've been using people from the community. I even noticed oh, yeah. like on the 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 part that made me laugh the hardest on your your how to get a girlfriend video was whenever <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, like a shiny. 
and then you're like, oh, it's finally working, and he's like, oh. she runs past you, and there's Rick Master. No, no, <laughs> you know what's so funny about that? Okay, what? first of all, shout out my shout out my boy Grim because he, he yeah. hooked up this connection. I thought it was so funny that you did that video of Rick Master Z because not even like 12 <laughs> hours earlier, I had like reached out to him without even like like my friend Grim like found his contact. I reached out, I was like, hey, would you be down to be in this video? And he was. And he's the coolest yeah. dude ever. He's super chill. And so I see nice. a video of him 12 hours later after recording with him. I'm like, what the heck? This dude's everywhere. <laughs> no, it was, it's, it honestly killed me because I remember, I think you commented on that video and you're like, no way, like he's one of my boys too. And then seeing him in that video just killed me as well. It was like, I mean, it makes sense. Whenever you have a shiny Pokemon like that, like, it, as far yeah. as your video goes, it'd be pretty hard not to get a girlfriend in Poke MMO, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just thought that was hilarious, though, the fact that I saw him in your video after recording. Oh, for <laughs> sure. It's, it was, it's just such a cool story to hear about. Like, it was fun, too, because I just, like, chatted with him, and it was, you know, I was like, oh, cool, like, he has a Suicune. And then, you know, you look a second longer, and you're like, Oh shit! It's blue. <laughs> like, like. I wish they so, had the, the shiny particle effect in the mod for. So you yeah. Can tell a little bit more, just because it's like a little difficult to tell sometimes. But. Oh, yeah. for sure, especially with like if you I'm trying to think, like even Entei would probably be pretty difficult to tell because all, all that changes is what the red changes to a black color, like a gray. Yeah. What's your uh? What's your favorite shiny, by the way? Just out of curiosity, I'm sure you probably said it before, but. Let me see. Uh, as far as like favorite shiny goes. Um. Uh, oh my goodness. One I I don't know if I necessarily have like a favorite. I would definitely say one that's grown on me a ton is Ball Toy. Um, oh, isn't that that thing that looks like a T? I, I think I've seen that before. Kind of. Yeah. It's it's Clay Doll's little like baby version or whatever. But it's it turns into like this cool green color that matches like the Unity cape that I wear, and oh, so it's okay, kind okay, of become it. my favorite. You know what I mean? It's just because cool it like little... matches your fit. Yeah, it matches the fit, and it's, like, got this cool color scheme that's, you know, it changes in a big way without being, like, you know, um, super bright or vibrant. It's just more, the colors are still more muted, like it's original, but it just changes enough to where I think that's super cool. What about yourself, yeah. though? Uh, this is going to sound a little ridiculous, so I know that the actual, like, sprite itself doesn't change all too much, but... Go for some reason, like not even for some Garchomp in game, like I don't know if it's because of the mod that I have, like the shiny part, but like yeah. in game Garchomp looks so it's like the black air forces of shinies. Like it, it's just like <laughs> pure black. It just looks hard. Like you don't want to mess with a guy for like a shiny Garchomp. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. dude definitely like would, you know. <laughs> He'd mess you up places. for sure. He'd mess you up, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it is cool. I've seen I don't know I can't remember when it was, but I've seen somebody walking around with a shelf of one. I, he oh didn't link God. it to me, but it was like it had the follower sprite that was like twice as big or whatever. And that was I had to <laughs> that admit that thing insane. was pretty it was pretty clean. I did. So what are you working on in game right now? Um, are you go I know you're doing your region lock and I, I've heard that you've oh, been in the safari yeah. zone a ton. Yeah, yeah. Me in the safari zone. <laughs> <laughs> so right now I'm uh, about seven and a half thousand encounters in the safari zone and I've been egging the whole time. Uh, yeah. So I'm. Currently, I'm egging Gibble, Axu, Fungus, Glammeon, Carnivine to the best of my ability. But, like, honestly, I've been buying out the market so much that sometimes I have to, you know, shunt, egg shunt, like, Bronzer, Wizmer, and Miltank and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is a little cringy. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> you know, I need to get out of the region. I'm, the only reason I'm, like, uh, staying in the Safari, though, is, is obviously, like, the male breeders are nice and making good money. But, like, a part of me, like, in the back of my head is, like, if I am going to phase, like, how sick would it be if I got, like, a Chansey or a Cypher, like, a 70 mil shiny? Oh, yeah. So hard? Like, uh, obviously it's like a you know negative five percent chance of catching it but you know <laughs> hey but if it happens you know what i yeah, mean yeah. like talk about such a, i i mean i feel like a lot of people would agree too that if it were to happen to anybody if anyone were to walk out of a region with one of those from the safari zone you're pretty mm. deserving of that with how dedicated you've been to that region lock in kanto so dude i i genuinely like i i didn't say anything because I, I like when the whole shiny lock thing was going on my whole like drama or whatever uh, yeah I feel like low key in my mind, I was like, "There's, I, I'm definitely shy, like, really, no but I, I, but I, like, I remained stoic and like I just went for it, and I was just, I just happened to be that, you know, that top one percent. <laughs> yeah, dude. Super no, dry. it's it's sick. Cause so is your last one still the shelter then? Yeah, so I got a shelter at um recorded 195,000 encounters. Me personally, I think I went more like 220, 230, just because I yeah. lowballed my my first count and I went over that in the region lock series. 
Uh, yep. But yeah, I don't have any others right now. I'd really like to get another one, and I, you know, ideally an outer region just so I can move on to the next region. I'm a little nervous with the community vote. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, prior to making the video, like talking about the community vote, like I was getting a lot of memes and a lot of people trolling, be like, "Oh, we're gonna send you the Sinnoh, haha!" Like it would <laughs> suck to be in Sinnoh for 1K hours. So, and like I was hearing that every single day when I was, because yeah. I stream in the Petrovsky Discord server, like or like every day almost. Yeah. Uh, and people in there would just keep on trolling me about that. So like I, I felt like I had to address it in the video. Which, looking yeah. back on it, was really stupid, because now people want to do it even more. <laughs> <laughs> it but, almost became counterproductive to mention it. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, I, you know, probably going to get sent to Sinnoh if people decide to troll and send me there, but I'm hoping I get sent to, like, Unova or something, just because I want to be able to grow Lepas. That was, like, a big pain, you know, doing the Oh walk. my gosh, I didn't even think about that. Not being able to, to like, create your Dude, own Lepas that it, way has got to suck. Let me, let me put this in perspective. I have to pay the Lepa tax, and I have to pay the Pokeball tax. The Lepa tax being, I have to obviously pay the GTL price. Maybe if a teammate's online, I can get, like, a good deal. But, like, yeah. the Pokeball tax sucks. Like, if I want Dust Balls or any type of special oh, ball, they don't sell no. it in Kanto. They do not sell it in Kanto. I get I get the, the international tax for shipping, you know? I gotta buy it off oh. the GTL from some other land. <laughs> we see, yeah, you have to buy, oh my gosh, you've got to buy timer balls and everything off the GTL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude. It's, it's a little frustrating, but... Usually I just, I only keep Pokeballs and I've been enjoying being in the Safari because I don't have to worry about it at all. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's crazy though, dude. That's, that's why I've been I mean, so broke. I, I've been so broke the whole time, the entire time. I'm just absolutely <laughs> broke. Well, I mean, it makes sense hearing all of that. My goodness, dude. I, again, like, I knew you were dedicated and committed to this region lock, but that's like not even being able to buy regular timer balls and stuff for like alphas is crazy. Yeah, and I've been in the Safari for over, I, I want to say, like, 100 hours now. I, I'm at 1250, and I got, I think I got the shelter at 1146 or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, like, 100 hours into this egg hunt of just doing the Safari and hatching. The, like, I've been, the whole time I've been in the Safari, I've just been hatching the whole time. There hasn't been a single Jeez. second I haven't been hatching. <laughs> yeah, so you've just been grinding. Is that your last step to get out of the region? Yeah, I literally just need to get the outer region shiny. It does not matter which one it is. It could be a Wismer, or it could be, like, a Glamio. You know, whatever ends up coming out of the egg. Yeah, well, dude, freaking best of luck with that. And for people who who aren't aware of that series, mm -hmm. um, first of all, that you know, shame on them. But second of all, <laughs> yeah, what shame. what are what were the um like what break down the list of what you had to do locking yourself in the region just so that way people can understand the insanity yeah. that you've you've signed yourself up for here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Pokemon Region Lock consists of five goals. The first goal being you need to complete the storyline, and that involves any extra missions. So, like, for example, in Kanto, the Team Rocket stuff after Kanto, you'd have to do that, too. Like, the stuff yeah. to get to the islands. Uh, the second thing is to completely fill out your Pokédex, and that includes every single Legendary in the region. So, for example, in Kanto, you're not allowed to leave Kanto, even if you got the in-region, out-region shiny, which I'll get to in a second, if you didn't yeah. get the, all the Legendaries, so if you didn't get all the birds. So I've already gotten all the birds. The only exception to that is uh, Shaman, just because, you know, you can get that in any region now. Yeah. Uh, but any region-specific ones, so like Mewtwo, uh, stuff like that. You know, oh, so you even King of the Hill, guys. Yeah, like, th that's why I had that Mewtwo video. I spent 69 hours hunting Mewtwo exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I do yeah. remember that now. That is, yeah, because I remember it ended up being 69, which is, like, the funniest yep. thing 520 ever. 520 to 589. <laughs> Jeez, dude. Yeah, it was the, honestly, it was the worst 69 hours of my life. I really hated encountering down there. It was so annoying. Because <laughs> you, if you got a Wobbuffet, you have to, like, the, I didn't have a reactive gas bomb because I run, wanted to run Swarm uh, yeah. as my leading mon, so I had to, like, kill the Wobbuffets when they came up or, like, you know, oh. I, there was something else in there that, like, made it made you wait a second, and it was annoying. Yeah. But, yeah, that was a whole struggle. The third goal of the uh, region lock is to get 1,000 hours uh, in the region that you're locked in. So, for Kanto, for example, you know, I have a 1250 now, so I've already completed that challenge. If I moved on to Sinnoh, I'd have to get 1,000 hours there. If I moved to Hoenn, 1,000 hours there. So, in the grand scheme of things, with all five regions, the fastest you can complete a, a Pokemon region lock is 5,000 hours. The the fastest okay. you can do it. Uh, the I mean, fourth goal... Alone. Oh yeah, <laughs> jeez, dude, that alone oh, is brutal. Yeah, I'm at a uh, twelve fifty, so I, I'm already two hundred fifty hours past what would have been ideal for Kanto. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, that's the uh the third goal. The fourth goal is to get an in region shiny, and that just simply means any shiny that you can wild encounter. So my shelter, for example, would be an in region shiny because I can wild encounter it. 
Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that leads to the fifth goal, which is what I'm doing now is the outer region shiny. And that just means that it's a shiny that you cannot wild encounter in the region. And the only ways that you're able to do that is either an event happening like raids and you got like a, you know, something from the raids uh, yeah. or like a swarm that spawns like those 4X swarms that spawn around the map. Sometimes you get outer regions there. Uh, and when you get those swarms, that's actually how you unlock uh, egg hunts. So, for example, if I got like a spoink swarm and I didn't have that um, the OT prior to that, I wouldn't have been able to egg it until I got that spoink swarm caught OT and then I could start egging it again, uh, which makes it really oh, interesting. Okay. So, like, when you start the account, you don't have any, like, eggs you can do. You can't egg anything. Uh, you can't do the fifth goal at all, pretty much, until you start getting swarms. You get out of region mon OT and then you can start egging them. Yeah. Wait, so is this, like, so going, like, focusing more on that point... Are you are you saying that like you aren't even allowed to purchase spoinks off the GTL to egg with? No, 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 no. So it's it's a little complicated because the way like OT works is a little weird in this game. So like basically yeah. if if you do not have caught OT on a mon, like even if you've seen it before, like the spoink for example, let's say you've seen oh. the spoink, you've never caught it. If yeah. you try to egg it, it'll, you'll get the star next to your name. It won't be your OT. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, okay. But if but you need to sense. get the caught OT to in order to egg it which is really cool and makes this challenge super compelling because when you start the account you literally can't egg any you don't have any cool egg hunts like but yeah. now i i have gibble axu fungus glammy alcarn because i've caught those through swarms or events you know so yeah. like it's it's a really compelling way to play and like I, I just think it's really interesting you know no that that makes complete sense i did completely forgotten about the like the ot star or whatever that is whenever you breed something that you haven't seen in the ot decks yeah, like, that wouldn't count for me. If I got an OT star in shiny, you know, it wouldn't count towards the goal, even if it was out of region. Yeah, which, I mean, I feel like, too, like, that would just suck. You know oh, what I, I mean? I would like, hate It would just be brutal, so man. Much. Dude, I read a PvP mon that was out of region that had a star uh, yesterday. Yeah. And, oh, my God, it was stressful. <laughs> You're like, just please don't be shiny. Like, yeah, anything so I, I know, this. Dude. My teammate just completed a one-year-long egg hunt. So, like, in my head, I'm like, is this going to take me a year? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I I've never done like I I'm doing egg hunts right now, but I mean I've never gotten anything and I've invested for sure hundreds of hours into creating eggs and stuff, but I've also I also had a teammate who I think it was on his 11th breed, he got a shelf of Voltorb, which is just Alpha the crazy. Voltorb? Yeah, it was the craziest thing ever cuz those Dude, are so what? pretty expensive too. Have you ever seen an alpha electrode? That thing is massive. Yeah, no, so he has it as an electrode now and it's just a giant blue ball. It's the funniest thing on the planet. <laughs> that sounds like a like a dream. Like I like went to bed and like had like the best Pokémon dream ever and then like woke yeah. up and got disappointed after. <laughs> Dude, no, the craziest the thing heck? that happened too, probably the craziest thing that happened in the entire Shiny War uh -huh. was um, my buddy Louis Zero, he he just barely filled his first box of shinies. He does mm -hmm. like all five times hordes, but it's still so impressive. But in the last hour of shiny, like you can't write this better. In the last hour of shiny wars, he normally gets you know a shiny a day. Like this guy's insane. But he went thirty days dry, and on the in the very last hour, he got a zero phase Zorua. No, so it was like it was like everyone was like no way dude like it's the last hour copium like we need something to win dude, and then see, out of the blue he's like holy shit guys <laughs> like come to lost lord it was crazy so even stuff like that like like just like stories like that like i'd love for like that tale to be able to like succinctly and very well be told like that like pokemon motivi like something like like if something happened in your shiny word like crazy like that to where like yeah. the clip itself wouldn't be evident like i want to be able to like offer a way to like give people like express their stories and like their their cool achievements of things that happen and like a succinct and well done way like, no for sure and that's that's example. what i think is so cool is it's like you know what i mean like they're think of you know that's just in one of the hundreds of teams that are in this game and that's just yeah. like one month like think of all of the cool experiences of like even like for a few months ago if you remember that guy who got what was it two shiny Ariados in the same swarm uh, I, I'm not familiar having, with that clip to be honest yeah so he ended up having to kill one of them because if he's doing times five hordes and he popped two shiny Aridos which is just so fortunate but unfortunate too Dude, imagine you're like in your head you're like okay which one is the better IVs shit yeah shit. <laughs> that's the whole thing is that was like the whole meme for a while it's like whichever one you killed the other one was six by you know six by 31 I just sent you the clip for fun to check out later but it's it's just insanity dude that's so, crazy. But yeah, like there's so many people out there who have cool stories. And I seriously think your Poke MMO TV idea is going to just do super well.
in my Probably. opinion. I appreciate that. I actually, uh, I really would love if there were more like uh, Pokemon YouTubers like in this space, and I, I think there should be. Uh, yeah. I'm even, I'm even making a video. Like I'm, I want to say like I'm like sixty percent done with it. I still need to record the actual footage, but I have like the, like the quote unquote script, I guess you could say for it. Ready. Uh -huh. Uh, it, the video is going to be like how to become a Pokemon YouTuber where like, I literally like I go over everything you would possibly need to know as far as like yeah. recording edit like and when I say editing I mean like I'm literally going to like I'm going to do it fast like it's going to be a 30 minute video it's not going to be long uh, yeah. but I'm going to show you like hey do you want to do subtitles this is how you do that hey do you want to zoom in hey do you want to have an image on this like stuff like that like just really like key parts of video editing and then re the recording process and like stuff like that i'm gonna make it like a 30 minute video just like how you can go from like zero to make up like a pokemon mode channel because i think like so many people are like talented and if they really just like you know if they really gave themselves the opportunity to put themselves out there they could really do well like a lot of people are a lot more talented than they think they are uh 100 percent, dude it's a, it's like 90 percent like just the confidence of doing something you know yeah so i'm just hoping like... that if i make that people will like get inspired to you know <laughs> you oh know, for sure community, i guess I mean, I'll I'll definitely be watching that because my editing needs to be that I got to step up my editing game, dude. I have like things pop up on the screen, but as far as like zooming in those things, I've just I haven't even tried. <laughs> like... Oh, dude, I I cannot wait for you to see the uh, the shiny like uh, recap or whatever that I do for my team. I I specifically took on that project to become a better editor. Like I, oh, cool. I reached out to my team and so I was like, Hey, I'm going to do all this for free for you guys. I'm going to do all these edits. Just send, you know, send me all the screenshots and stuff. And I, and you can literally see, like you'll see in the video, it goes from like the first one I do to the last one, the, the difference in just like, and like what is done in the edit is just so substantial. Like I got so better and so, like such a fast amount of time. Cause I, I literally put dozens of hours, you know, into this project already. And like, I'm really happy I did like it's paying dividends. And I hope that shows in my new region lock episodes. Like, I want to yeah. be able to, you know, up the ante on those as well, make those a lot more professional and well-edited and well put together. No, it's it's super crazy, and it's definitely, like, it's one of those things where, like, I I think it's it's just, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to just explode past just about every other Poke MMO YouTuber. Because that quality, dude, is, like, it's insane for retention, for just about anything. Having that quality is so important, and that's something that, you know, a lot of people... Uh, could benefit from learning like that video is such a cool idea because i mean i know people who whether it's for confidence reasons or whether it's you know they're just like oh i i lack this skill set to become you know a youtuber for this game or i could never do that it's like if people would have a little confidence and just bet on themselves that way like they'd be shocked with how far they could go so that's a super yeah. cool idea it it's really unfortunate too, because when the, even when there are cases where people do like put themselves out there and they and they like do like take on like the whole video editing and the whole posting videos aspect of things, and this video is also going to touch base on this, but I'll touch base on it a little bit here. It, yeah. it it's really unfortunate, but when you make a new YouTube channel, uh, like and obviously like this is going to sound a little harsh, uh, but mm -hmm. to begin with, a the audience doesn't really care about you at all. Like you don't have yeah. a following. Nobody like knows who you are. So if you make a video, if you don't grab their attention in the first thirty seconds to begin with, like they don't even care. They don't know who yeah. you are. You know what I mean? That's like just kind of how YouTube is. That's just that's just showbiz, baby. You know? Yes, sir. Uh, but anyways, but but like the whole there's another aspect of it too. Not even like the, even if you have an amazing video and you post like top line, you know, amazing content. If it's your if this is really it sucks it, when you have a YouTube channel you first make it YouTube does not know what type of YouTube channel you are it just yeah. has you as like a default channel and Mr Beast has like a really popular quote where he says like oh your first 100 videos won't get views and that's true if you're like doing like vlogs and stuff and generalize and you don't have like a niche but if you have like yeah. a niche like Pokemon Mo and you make like a and you start making Pokemon Mo videos the first few videos that you make no matter how good they are they will not get views most likely because YouTube yeah. doesn't know what type of channel you are. So like what I did, like I did that very like strategical way. Like some of my videos when I first started making videos got deleted because of this strategy that I that I you know took upon myself. But I made like three to five to seven uh, Pokemon Mo videos, tagged them well, titled them well, so YouTube knew what type of channel I was. Like the first three I dropped, it was like okay, this is I think this is a Pokemon Mo channel. I dropped yeah. another three that are well tagged, well you know well hashtagged, all that stuff. And now YouTube knows like okay, this is a Pokemon Mo channel. These are the people I need to advertise this to. And then that's when I started releasing the region lock stuff and all my high quality content. And because I, YouTube already knew what type of channel I was, it pushed me to that audience. And that's why wow. I quote unquote blew up so fast. It's because I knew what I was doing. Like I knew how to position myself well. And obviously like the Petrowski shout out really helped a lot, kind of, like blow that even more. But like, it, you know, it's unfortunate because people don't know about that aspect of YouTube. Like the algorithm doesn't know who you are until you tell it who you are. And yeah. it sucks because people will make like this really amazing content for their first few videos and then it doesn't do well and they don't get any views and they get really discouraged. And they're like, oh, like, oh, well I tried. 
Yeah. Uh, so like, I'm going to touch base on that too. And I'm going to really go in depth. Cause like I've done this a few times already. I kind of know how YouTube works. Uh, so I feel like I could really like, I, I could offer a lot as far as like teaching people, you know, how to make channels, I guess, if that makes sense. No, for sure. And that, I mean, I totally learned something too. Like whenever I started, I would have killed to have a video like that because for me, it was always just like a dream of like, oh, I just love Pokemon. I want to share that joy with people. And I had no idea what I was doing. Like I even did it to where like I was so embarrassed at what I was doing for some reason that I like had to record on my phone in the closet. <laughs> and it's so funny because if you go back and listen to my first ever video, you can tell that the audio quality was totally recorded on an iPhone. And but it's like like you were saying, it's like I had no idea. Like even now, like this is my first time hearing that, you know, YouTube doesn't know who you are. You need to to kind of release these quicker videos to show it almost give it you know the direction to point um, yeah exactly like your viewers right you need to be like i am a poke mmo channel and then once you get um you know like that thought in youtube's head then you start posting your high quality that's like genuinely i'm mind blown with how strategic you've been about all this like that's i knew your content quality was high and that you were you know going about this in a very intelligent way but i'm like i'm like jaw drop dude that's <laughs> super impressive yeah, like if you look at my first video, it's literally like a uh, it's like an AI TikTok voice like guide thing, and like I thought that one was decent, so I kept it up, and it's my first video I ever made on the channel, so yeah. I kept it. Uh, but like there were a lot of those that I made, like probably like five more of them that just are private and now are got deleted because they they just aren't up to my standard now. But I needed them to guide me towards to where I am, so I can exactly. get put in that path. Uh, no, so it's, like it's that's so that's my biggest advice for people, and like I will be making that video that goes in the way greater depth about that but like if anyone is gonna be coming like a pokemon youtuber you can't be bothered watch the video that's the biggest takeaway i could give you is just make sure you youtube knows who you are before you try to get into that door you know yeah no it's it's just hedging your bet in such a creative and like smart way like that's that's knowledge that i feel like that only pops up after you've created a few channels which like you said you've yeah. had that experience which is just it totally allows you to sit back and go okay well what worked what didn't work you know what i mean and then reapproach a different niche in a really cool way but and even piggyback one other thing i'll piggyback off of too is that mr beast quote is actually my goal whenever i started this channel mm -hmm. i literally told my like it i freaking smiled whenever i heard you say that because that was my goal it was like i need to make 100 guides before i'm allowed to be upset about the views before i'm allowed to be stoked about the views like this is the the testing pool you know what i mean like i need yeah. to sit down and i need to to pump out this these different things, just try different things, try to to create different, you know, series and, and different videos. And now like this podcast, just do what you can to like, you know, kind of just um, take up as much space as you can or to reach as many people as you can. And then that's not, you know, oh, wow, like you've done well. It's like, OK, this is my sample size. What's working? What's not? Then go from there, you know? Yeah, and, and it's nice. Mr. Beast was right to where, like, you do need, like, 100 videos, quote-unquote, like, generally speaking. But, like, if you're in a niche like we are, like, Pokemon Mo, and the community's yeah. already, like, carved out, you don't need 100. You only need, like, 5 to 7, I'd say. Oh, for so, sure, yeah, because yeah. it helps. But it's it's just so cool to, like, have that mindset, too, though, like you were saying, where it's just, you know, you're just going to sit down, you're going to learn it, and you're going to approach it in a smart way rather than just, you know, kind of half-assing and being like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to upload something. Because if you yeah. if you do it that way, then you know the success obviously oh. isn't going to be there. Oh my god, dude! I need to log out. <laughs> like I, sorry, the off topic. I, I think it's <laughs> no, like this good. is the cool. This is the coolest thing to me. I've never had this happen to me in a video game, so it's like really new to me. But it, and I think it's really cool. But it is kind of bothering me right now because I need to record. Like yeah. if I stand around in the game, like people will message me and like trade me <laughs> and like fucking like stand next to me because they think I'm record. Like I think it's so cool and funny. <laughs> it's hilarious, dude. Yeah, it's. There's so many funny moments that way where it's like somebody will pop up and be like, yo, are you that guy from YouTube? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it never like... happens until I change my name too. Because I used to have like this really like niche name that wasn't related at all. And then as soon as I changed it to Team Rocket YT, like everyone just yeah. was like, oh, hey, there's Team Rocket. Like, <laughs> no, that's next to so my shiny sick, growler. <laughs> yeah, it's it, and that's another I mean, going off that, like that's total proof that like you've put in the dedication and the love too. that like it's being recognized by random people who are like, Oh, sick! Like that's that cool guy from YouTube, you know? Like that's Dude, that's it's got to be a cool no feeling. Idea. You have no idea how rewarding it is. So I didn't know how passionate I was about video editing until I picked it back up for this game. 
Yeah, uh, but I, I really love video, but I think I love it so, so I'm not gonna curse. I love it so freaking much. <laughs> uh, and, and when somebody like leaves a comment on my video saying like, hey, like mentioning like, hey, the editing was really good on this or like in game, someone's like, hey, I really love your videos, the editing, like that just means so much to me. Like as I just put dozens of hours into this crap and then just have somebody like be like, hey, what you did was good. Like it's yeah. like, the validation just feels so good. Uh, no, for sure. It's and again, like not to just sit here and, and compliment you the whole time, but genuinely like it's it's so well deserved as far as your channels like concerned because it, I mean there there's a reason you know you got the Petrowski shout out there's a reason like I wanted to chat with you on here and and like there's a reason that like just about everybody is like interested in in the videos you're making and and reaching out to you and it's because you're genuinely like super talented at it. And so it free, it makes it like almost inspires more people to want to create content for the game, which mm. I love. And anyone who loves this game, like you were saying, wants there to be more content creators and wants this game to get to more people because it's like, I don't know, like it sounds cheesy, but it's like all the new Pokemon games haven't really been like hitting home for me. And then, you know, yeah, I, that's the, I uh, vibe this. that I got. Yeah, but then I, you know, I, I get on this game and it's just like, it's like you're a kid again. You know what I mean? You can pretend to be a some Dude. kid on your ds again for two hours after work you know <laughs> did you see that video like talking about i don't know if it was talking about pokemon in particular but like the there was a video being like oh this is like what pokemon sh was supposed to be like it was supposed to be an mmo like back when they had the game boy they had like the whole trading aspect and like it was designed to be an mmo they just didn't have the technology to back it at the yeah. time so like this is what pokemon should have been or whatever had the technology been like caught like because they already mastered the game loop from the from the go you know oh uh, totally i mean they even had the what's it called um the global the glo the global the global <laughs> what was it global trade center or something on... i mean i don't know i've only ever played leaf green i just i've watched the video talking about it and i was like yeah, no, yeah. that makes sense yeah because i think it was in i think it started with x and y or maybe mm -hmm. it was with black and white too but they they created this system where basically you could it was basically the gtl like you could list a pokemon but yeah. all you could do is like i want you know i'm gonna list my you know shiny poniard and i will only like it'll only allow you to trade if you have the pokemon that you're requesting so it was a little gimmicky because it was like people would you know meme on it and be like shiny wormple and then it's like you know in order to get this you need to trade a shiny rayquaza so it's just like stupid uh, stuff so, like yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. but okay. and you know there's like a bunch of hacked pokemon and stuff so it ended up being gimmicky but at the end of the day like you were saying it's it totally should have been this way you know like even in that way, I mean, and them doing that is total proof of it, too, where they they try in some small way to, like, almost salvage that idea where they're like, yeah, like, you can trade with anyone across the world with, like, Wonder Trade and these things, but PokeMMO just does it in such an elegant way where it's, like, I mean, the, the player-based economy and, like, money farming and stuff just adds such a cool aspect to Pokemon that, like, the original mainline games don't have, you know? Yeah, and the, the devs do such a good job, like, making this, like, last for longevity-wise. Like, the economy's gonna be here, you know, in, like, five oh, years yeah. from now, it should be fine. Like, I'm not worried about, it. Even, you know, even if raids get added or some, you know, dramatic game change happens, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. They, they know what they're doing. No, it's, it, yeah, they're very intentional with, like, everything that they've added and all of, like, even, like, how the legendaries work and the roaming legendaries. It's, like, yeah, of course you have things where it's, like you know, the first Articuno gets caught and listed for, like, 20 mil or, like, something crazy, but it's it's one of those things where it's, like, everything is has a way of naturally finding its place in the market, and if it doesn't, then, like, they jump in and take action. You know, it's super cool. Yeah, I've never had any interaction with the devs personally uh, yet, to be honest. I've, I've, like, talked to mods here and there. I'm a, I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm still in their good graces. I, uh, but I, I don't know. I, because I haven't interacted with them, but I, I made a form post for that, like, the girlfriend video that I had. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know how there's, like, an audio video section where you can, like, post videos or whatever? Yeah. I posted one for the girlfriend video, which is the title and then the link, and it got removed in a day. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, I definitely, so, like, I, I see, I like, it, when, it got, no. when it got removed, I was like, I was like, okay, fair. Like, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, yeah. But, like, like, in my head, I'm like, I hope I didn't piss them off. I hope they weren't like, oh, look at this Team Rocket guy, like, making a muck of our game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no if anything it was probably you know they probably just chuckled as they got rid of it like yeah, yeah no, they I, I, like when they got yeah. rid of it i was like i was like you know what fair enough you know i get it <laughs> it makes sense 
it is i mean it's a message that needs to be heard but to you know you got to preach that though like i respect yeah, it that, it was it was a play <laughs> on the uh the, it was supposed to be a play on like the roomscape meme of like buying girlfriend 10k or like there's a whole meme in the community about like getting a girlfriend in the game so i was trying to play oh really that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's where it was inspired from. In fact, Barrels made a video called How to Get a Girlfriend in Pokemon before. I asked him permission to uh, make the video because I didn't want to, like, you know, duplicate his content or whatever. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's it such a funny blessings. <laughs> Barrels is a sick guy, too. He's always dude, been super Actually, funny. while I'm here, shout out Barrels because that dude taught me about keyframes. Like, I my editing was, like, maybe, like, a 4 out of 10 before, and, and he, like, he gave me some advice. Like, I messaged him on Discord. I was like, hey, love your editing. Like, I, how do you do this? And he gave me advice, and I, it absolutely, like, changed my editing for the for the better like i really appreciate him so much i would yeah. not be where i am today without his advice honestly no dude Bar barrels is definitely part of the backbone of the game i'd say like so many people just end up finding their little slot in this community of like you know he loves making meme content and like some shit post ones that are just like you know the, it makes it fun to watch like one of my like i think my favorite one of his is the what was it whenever like that chippy chippy choppa choppa thing was out with like the cat meme and he did it with Skitty. I thought that was super. It's just such a Dude, funny idea. You know what I mean? Some of, some of the Pat memes he makes are really funny. Like, I don't know if you've yeah. ever like, gone in this channel. Like, I don't know how long you've been watching Pokemon videos. But I like went on like a little barrels like binge one night and just like watched like 20 of his videos from like way back when. And like, dude, dude's been funny for a minute, you know, dude. Oh, no, he is like even what was the one? Uh, one of them, one of the more recent ones killed me. It was him. Like, it was like Team Mister going through and like. Yeah, um, there was some movie the clip where it thing. was like, "Yeah, no more phases." No more phases. Like the Ponyta <laughs> walks in and he like shoves him over. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I, I, I actually, I, I, yeah, I died when they when I saw that. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, no, it's he. He does such a great job, and it's it's just so cool to see. Speaking of inspiration, I, I just wanted to throw this out here because I had this fall, and I thought I think it'd be the coolest thing ever. Obviously, in like a realistic world, this probably would never happen. Like you'd have to find <laughs> like dudes who'd be like totally down for it. Yeah. Uh, but like, have you? Are you like familiar with like the optic or like the phase house, like from that whole like Call of Duty scene or whatever, like that whole thing? That yeah, they get, get a bunch of content creators and like went out. I think it'd be so cool, if like if there was like a Pokemon content house, <laughs> and they were like they were just like three to five content creators that like all like shared rent or whatever. They just like recorded content like the whole time or whatever. And, like, dude, that'd I, be so I, sick. I think that would, obviously, like realistically, that would never happen. But like, I just think that'd be like a cool thing. <laughs> Oh, no, it, it's super cool. We actually joked about that in our team. Uh, I was chatting with like one of the leaders of our team and he was like sending links to different like giant lots in like <laughs> the middle of nowhere. And he's like, dude, let's go start our own like compound. And in order to join the team, you have to move there. Like, I'm down. I'm down. Funny idea. I just, I just yeah. graduated college and I'm down. I got nothing yeah. to do. <laughs> no, but it's it's such a funny thing, though, that like. It would be super funny in, you know, to joke. It's imagine, funny to joke. Imagine you, someone gets a shiny and, the, and then they're like, seem like, wake up, I got a shiny. <laughs> yeah, three in the morning, just wake everybody up for like a hype video or something. Uh, dude, I got to move. I got I got spotted again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to <laughs> run away, dude. I was I, I was I was in a I was in a power plant. Someone found me. <laughs> you got to got to go to channel five and just hide, dude. Lay low or something. I'm in the, I'm in the I'm in the Canto fossil room now. I'm hiding in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think many people are going to bug you in there, which is good. Yeah, it's my favorite uh, secret PC in Kanto. Yeah. Oh, dude, one thing I was thinking, too, is as far as, like, you're at a region, Shiny, one thing that could be cool, too, I don't know if you, you've probably thought of the idea, but doing fossils could be sick. Because you fossils, get those as OTs. So, would... Let me ask you something, because I didn't really think about this technicality until you brought this up. So, like, if yeah. I... The only fossils you can do in Kanto are like the dome helix or like the aerodactyl, the and then omnite, and then whatever the other one is. I can't remember the name. Uh, yeah, the other fossils you can't do here. So, technically, wouldn't oh. they be in region shinies if you can get them in region, or like would that be an outer region? I don't even know. Oh, uh, that's I mean, that's a great question. I have no idea to be honest with you. <laughs> like, but... I want to I say outer region is because of how hard it is, but at the same time, I feel like it is in region, right? Because like, probably, it's yeah. Region. Yeah, just now that, that would make sense. I want to leave the can <laughs> I want to leave Kanto so badly, dude. Like it's it's. I'm nervous. I'm gonna get like a uh, headaches from like the 3D regions because I'm not used to it. To be honest. Oh, but, for like, sure. I definitely am like starting to feel it now after tw you know I'm at a thousand two hundred fifty hours just in Kanto. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, that's half of what I've played. Like, <laughs> and you're just in the Kanto region, man. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, like I, I don't get me wrong. I love Kanto. It's the only region I've ever played. I, mean, I enjoy it so much. But you know, you can only be in here for so long before you start losing oh, your sanity. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So I guess one of the last questions I have is you brought up like, for example, in that fossil room, that's like one of your favorite secret PCs. What yeah. are some, in your opinion, some things that are overlooked in the Kanto region since you've spent like a disgusting amount of time there? Oh, did I got you? I got you. Like, it might it might need a second to think, but I, just a yeah. first few things. Another secret PC, the uh, the PC. I don't know if it's like Silfco. It's one of the like the Team Rocket things it, where you fight one of the Team Rocket battles in, in the storyline Kanto. There's a PC in one of those rooms. That's a cool, oh, cool. egg hunting spot. Uh, so that's a cool thing. Um, I did like make videos like touching bases on like my like secret Kanto money makers, but I think the um, let me look around the map real quick. I think Altering Cave is like ex extremely slept on. Um, super cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a super cool and I it's also misunderstood like it's it's cycles and it's not consistent cycles if that makes sense. Like there yeah. it's been times where it's like 0000 zero, zero, zero in game and I've been able to encounter Absol there and then other times at 0000 zero, 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 it'll just be Zubat only. So like uh, it okay. is it's not like a consistent schedule which is a huge like uh whatever you want to call it. People believe that usually when that's not yeah. the case. Um do you have any ideas of what you mean by like like things and i'm just kind of blanking right now i don't really know no no i mean you you're kind of covering it like you're hitting the nail on the head like i mean i feel like there's a lot of things too in like what is it the tenobi ruins like there's so many like look like slept on spots in canto oh, to let me let me let me point this out yeah too. go for it to um so if you are like myself and you do not like tentacruel at all and you do not want to thank tentacruel you. shiny and you do not want to chance a tentacruel shiny yes but, but you would like to fish there are a few spots in canto uh and when i say a few i only know two Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there are more where you can fish and not get tentacle, and I just wanted to point those out because I think they're amazing spots. Yeah. Uh, the first thing being Five Island, that's where I got my shelter because that spot is amazing because shelter is common there, and you have the chance to get star you there. So you're cha you're, oh, you're chancing star, star you and shelter. You don't get any tentas, and I think the only other thing there is like Psyduck and then the Krabby line, which oh, like cool. whatever. Uh, so that's a really cool spot. Another spot in Cerulean Cave, deep down in the deep depths of Cerulean Cave, yeah. <laughs> at the very bottom. Uh, you can fish in there, and it's actually a really cool spot. You don't get tentacles, you get Gyarados, uh, like the Poly uh, World like line. Uh, there's a few other ones, but you don't get tent in there. So I, I, sometimes I'll go fishing in there, like if I want to like relax or whatever, because I do like fishing. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, like I'm at the point now where like it's inefficient to do anything other than like hatch eggs <laughs> and doing the safari. So, yeah. Like I don't really do much anymore. But if you did want a cool spot to fish and you didn't want tentacle highly recommend those two spots no that's that's awesome i also you are in good company i have repels specifically for whenever i go over water because i just yeah. never want to even i don't even want to see one on my screen like i if the day ever comes that i get one i would just i've already told people in like my chat and stuff i'm just gonna give it away like i'll just do a raffle with it because i don't want it like i don't want to look at it i don't <laughs> i i am such a tent to hater and like it's sad because it's Honestly, like one, it's shiny is pretty good, but two, it's like it, I, it's kind of a cool Pokemon, but you're almost like conditioned to hate it with how common it is everywhere, you know? Yeah, I, I don't like it much at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a meme when I first started getting the region lock. Uh, that yeah. if I got a Tenta, I would have like uninstalled the game if that was my first shiny. <laughs> and like, I literally, I, it got to the point where like I, as like a like cool little thing, I was sending out Tentas to like my, my viewers, like my yeah. team, as like a meme that's so funny dude so i've no, I just... got like five of those already <laughs> <laughs> it's funny it's funny too like i get so much hate from it but i feel like all the people that no, you know what I, i'm yeah. i'm on you no no you know what it's just losing curse. fuck tentacle dude I, <laughs> thank I you like the yes it, you know cool it's a cool green shiny yeah 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 okay it's an ugly pokemon okay i don't care yep thank you and it's it's nice to know there's other sane human beings in the world you know because sometimes it's easy to forget but i i feel like as well so many people that you know st they're like oh no tentacool is actually cool it's a good pokemon like it's shiny looks great they're probably people who phased on it or like got it on accident they're just, and they're just they're trying just, to like, cope dude. They're, they're like yeah. they're like yeah man like I, it's not that bad i swear like look how many <laughs> look how many tentacles it has dude it's sick look yeah you can give it the egg move where it can like it there's some egg move like i think it's rapid spin that makes it useful in pvp and they like try to cope in all these ways i'm like no dude like just do just you, get good do you really want a water type rapid spinner my guy like hey, that's what i'm saying bro like come on what are we doing <laughs> stop lying to yourselves and just go hunt anything else you know <laughs> but like i i do the celio spot in Sinnoh to do xp it's horrible as far as efficiency goes but like you know i go places i'm like willing to trade 30 minutes to an hour of my time for getting a cool shiny you know what i mean yeah absolutely yeah, dude. But I hope we get another shiny soon, man. 
Oh, I I believe, dude. I think it. I think June's your month. I think you're gonna June? get out of Canto in June, man. Uh, I think June is gonna be a great month, especially for. <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be awesome. A lot of things are going on. Oh yeah, dude. It's gonna be sick. We've got I think Safari Week coming up too, which is gonna be super cool. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, dude. I, but uh, towards the end here, anything uh, that you want to bring up or chat about, or or how you feeling? Um. No, there, you know, I really appreciate you having me on here. Like, it's, this has been awesome. It's, uh, it's been so like, really cool experience just being able to talk to you, like, you know, you know, talk shit just because I used to watch your yeah, content dude. prior to, oh, you know, me making so videos nice to begin with. So like, it's just, it's a really cool experience. This is awesome. I really appreciate you having me on here. Uh, as far as things like I want to shout out, you know, just for people who have been listening since the beginning, you know, the, the Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon Mo TV thing that I'm going to be doing, you know, keeping a lookout for that. I'm also going to be doing that 1K special uh, the an event where I'm giving away 10 million Poke Yen and then a five million dollar giveaway. Uh, so you know, lots of mills on the line. I'll, I'll be making a video on that soon. Uh, you know, that's that's all I really have to shout out. <laughs> you know, shout yeah. out Team Roo. Shout out my team, Team Roo. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it's super cool and the feelings mutual, dude. Like it's it's honestly it's funny. Like before I I join these chats and like drag you in, like yeah. I've loved your content too. And so like I'll sit there and like fangirl. I'm like, all right, you gotta calm down, man. Like you gotta, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah, just add him to the both, call. Like, we're both like fangirling <laughs> over each other, like <laughs> like keeping <Yeah>. composure. <laughs> no, it's it's super funny. But again, it's it's super cool to to like actually be able to chat and and get to know you and and kind of like what pushes you to make content for the game and everything. So. Again, like you said, I'll have all of the links to all of um, Team Rocket's social medias um, in the description below. So please go check that out. But ultimately, man, again, I really appreciate you uh, you shooting the shit. And I it was fun chatting with you. Yeah, absolutely. I had a really good time. Thanks for having me on, man. Again, I just wanted to thank Team Rocket for his willingness to chat with me on this episode of the Pokemon Mo podcast. He's an awesome guy. And honestly, I had a super good time. Now let's move on to the catch event portion of today's episode. The first one is going to be held this Tuesday or tomorrow, the 4th of June, and it is called Deep in the Cave. This is going to be hosted by Matsui, and it is going to take place at 17 UTC, where the reward is going to be a gift beldum with your choice of nature, four moves, and six selectable IVs, as well as 1000 RP. Uh, this is a pretty good one for anyone looking to get a competitive Metagross, or if you just want to cool bell them and just want to participate in the event, that's also great. Up next is the one that I am personally the most excited for. It is called The Best Burb. This takes place on Saturday, the 8th of June, and is hosted by Elizin. It will start at 19 UTC, where we will be competing to get a gift shiny Chatot with your choice of nature, two moves, and three selectable IVs as well as 1000 RP. Shiny Chatot has been one of my shiny hunts for a while, so this would be a super cool way to get one. Make sure to prioritize this one. It is going to be awesome. And the final catch event of the week, and probably, in my opinion, the worst catch event that I've seen so far, it's called Welcome to Hoenn, and it's hosted by Des Bruno. It's going to take place on Sunday, the 9th of June, at 6 p.m. UTC, where we will be competing to get a gift Shiny Poochiena. Um, as the first place prize, so pretty bad prize. Honestly, it's a good shiny. It's just really unfortunate because so many people get this in Petalburg as a phase. Basically, if you single encounter anywhere in Johto, you're going to get this as a phase. Um, but you do get your choice of nature, two moves, and three selectable IVs, as well as 1,000 RP. So it's not all bad. Plus, a free shiny is a shiny. You know, it is what it is. But those are going to be the catch events for the week. Now let's move on to the media portion. So for the forum post of the week, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to, um, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Bertolfozo, Bertolfozo, I'm not sure, um, but you can, you can correct me if I got that incorrect, uh, for his forum post called Mod Mystery Dungeon Follower Sprites. This mod is so cool for your game, as it actually replaces the Pokemon Follower Sprites in-game, with the Mystery Dungeon sprites. I'm a huge fan of Pokemon Explorers, what is it, Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky, and honestly, some of the Pokemon look super good compared to, like, the other Nintendo DS follower sprite counterparts. So at least go check this mod out. It's not entirely finished. However, they have been grinding to get as many things done. I personally think that Shiny Spindle looks the best in this mod, and it makes me want him as my follower all the time. So go check this out. And a huge thank you again to this creator for providing us with this awesome mod. 
Now for the YouTube video of the week, uh, we are actually going to be going over to a channel I'm sure everyone's familiar with, which is Barrels, and it is no star, 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 star phases, Pokey MMO. This is a super funny video, and honestly, I'm not in their, their Pokemon team, but just from knowing the story of them, uh, all of them basically have been single encountering, trying to get this shiny pseudo Wudo in Sinnoh, and they have phased so many times, and so it's become kind of a meme that you know, they aren't able to get this pseudo Wudo without phasing, but I won't spoil anything else. Go watch this video. It's only 30 seconds and it's a great laugh. So thank you to Barrels for another awesome video and make sure to sub to him so that way you can stay up to date on some fun and very creative Poke MMO content. But honestly, that is going to wrap up the episode. Um, again, thank you so much for all of your support in watching this series. Let me know if you guys have any guests that you want to see on the podcast, if you have any questions or critiques. Um, again, I feel like the only reason that these episodes are getting better by the episode is because of your guys' feedback. So thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate everybody who listens. And get excited because episode six is going to have the biggest guest I've ever had on so far. So look forward to it, and I'll catch you guys next week.